Shalom, beloved. I welcome you to a program designed to bless the one who is love, Ahava, the master of divine mysteries, Yehovah, Yeshua, Jesus. It is my delight to proclaim this blessing. Borchu et Adonai Hamevorach. Blessed is the Lord who is blessed. Borchu et Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Vaed. Blessed is the Lord Yehovah who is blessed forever and forever. Come with me now, beloved, as I share a wonderful story of true love. I call it the Rose. John Blanchard was in the United States Navy and was stationed in Florida. We were not at war with anyone, so John spent much of his time in a Florida library where he did some studying. One day he took a book from the shelf and became very intrigued, not by the contents of the book, but by the notes penciled in the margin. The soft handwriting reflected a thoughtful soul and an insightful mind. He flipped to the inside cover where he found the previous owner's name, Miss Hollis Maynell. With time and effort, he located her address. She lived in New York City. He thought, what do I have to lose? So he wrote her a letter introducing himself and inviting her to correspond. The very next day, though, he was shipped overseas for service in the Second World War. But she corresponded, and during the next year and a half, John and Hollis grew to know each other through the mail. Each letter was a seed falling on the fertile heart. A romance was budding. John requested a photograph, but she refused. She felt that if he really cared, it wouldn't matter what she looked like. Finally, it came time for him to return from Europe, and they scheduled their first meeting, 7 p.m. at the Grand Central Station in New York. You'll recognize me, she wrote, by the red rose I'll be wearing on my lapel. So at 7 p.m., John was in the station looking for a girl whose heart he loved, but whose face he had never seen. Let us hear the words of John Blanchard. A young woman was coming toward me, her figure long and slim, her blonde hair lay back in curls from her delicate ears. Her eyes were blue as flowers. Her lips and chin had a gentle firmness, and in her pale green suit, she was like springtime come alive. I started toward her, entirely forgetting to notice that she was not wearing a rose. As I moved slightly, a small provocative smile curved her lips. Go in my way, sailor, she said. Almost uncontrollably, I made one step closer to her, and I saw Hollis Maynell. She was standing almost directly behind the girl, a woman well past 40. She had gray hair tucked under a worn hat. She was more than plump, her thick ankled feet thrust into low-heeled shoes. And the girl in the green suit was walking away. I felt as though I was split in two. So keen was my desire to follow her. And yet so deep was my longing for the woman whose spirit had truly companioned me and upheld my own. And there she stood. Her pale, plump face was gentle and sensible. Her gray eyes had a kind and warm twinkle. I did not hesitate. 
This would not be love, but it would be something precious, something perhaps better than love. A friendship for which I would always be grateful. I squared my shoulders and saluted, even though as I spoke, I felt choked up by the bitterness of my disappointment. I'm Lieutenant John Blanchard, and you must be Hollis Maynell. I am so glad to meet you. May I take you to dinner? The woman's face broadened into a tolerant smile, and then she spoke. Son, I have no idea who you are, and I have no idea what this is about. But the young lady in the green suit who just went by, she begged me to wear this rose on my coat. And she said, if you were to ask me to dinner, I should tell you that she's waiting for you in the big restaurant across the street. She said it was some kind of a test. What is it about this story, beloved, that is hauntingly familiar? Could it be that there is something hidden beneath the words that the Ruach, the Holy Spirit, desires to reveal? Let us look closer. In Hollis Maynell, we see a character who represents two forces. One is the force of light, Mashiach, the Messiah, the one who tests our love for him, the one who must hide himself to see if our response is genuine, the one who all the while observes us from a distance with eyes of love, longing and hoping we will make the right choice, longing and hoping that we will choose love and life. Beloved, we are lovingly watched over, observed from a distance, and tested by the one who loves us. The tests of God from Eve to this present day are opportunities presented to us by God to show his faithfulness and our moment to prove our love for him. How often the Lord longs to hear and see our response to his question, do you love me? Unaware we would respond to this question with our every action, our every thought, our every word, and the tests go on. There is a song that asks, how many times must I prove my love for you, Lord? And the answer, as often as it takes to expose and purge every other lover out of our heart and our soul, the bridegroom will have no competition. In Hollis Maynell, we also see the darker force, the enemy, the one who sets you up for a fall, the one who speaks with enticing words, the one who is pleasing to the eye and sharpens the desire for evil, the personification of adultery to avert the eyes of the dove from her beloved. Yes, in this person, we also can see the tempter. Beloved, there is a scripture in Matthai, Matthew, that reads, then Yeshua Jesus was led up by the Ruach, the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The Messiah's love for the Father, relentlessly tested and initiated by God himself. The devil's temptation, a mere pawn in the hands of the all-powerful, all-knowing chess master. A grueling test which was magnificently mastered by the one who was tempted in all things, yet without sin. The words of Yermeyahu Jeremiah speak to us. Ani Yehovah choker lev, bochen kleyot. I, the Lord, test the heart and search the mind 
the most secret parts. In John Blanchard, we see a man whose love was tested, a man whose love was different, not self-seeking, but sacrificial. It was not moved by what it saw, but faithful, committed, loyal, abiding. It was not affected by disappointment, but remained steadfast, a man of unyielding integrity. In John Blanchard, we see again the Messiah. In John Blanchard, we can see also a believer whose Messiah dwells in him, a believer whose Messiah will battle for him and fight to keep him in the hour of temptation, a believer whose right response would end the test, a believer whose honorable yet agonizing choice gave him the right to dine with his beloved. A believer who crucified his flesh, denied his longings and his desires, and chose Ahava, love. As we look at that sweet little lady, we see once again the Messiah no one was looking for. This couldn't be him. I have longed, I have hoped, and you tell me this is the one? This cannot be so. We see the Lord disguising and hiding himself, offending our minds to test our hearts. How much do you love and want me? Even if I come to you this way, a way in which you did not expect, will you receive me? The eternal, ultimate test and one which has been failed miserably by our hardened hearts, pride, and selfishness since his visitation. Isaiah tells us he had no splendor of appearance, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. In this woman, we can imagine the knowing eyes of the Messiah, the one who looks into the eyes of the Father and intercedes while his child is being tested. It is their secret. The Messiah speaks to us today. Shimon, Shimon, Hine darash hasatam, letartem etchem. Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. When the Lord reveals the red rose, beloved, we see the blood, we see his love, love that bleeds. You'll recognize me by the rose I'll be wearing. You'll recognize me.